Welcome to this series of three presentations, the pathway to test guidelines from science to standards for nanomaterials. These presentations are brought to you through projects NanoHarmony and NanoMet, which are working together to support the development of OCD test guidelines and guidance documents suited for the use of nanomaterials. My name is Erik Bleke and I work at the National Institute for Public Health and the Environment in the Netherlands, which is abbreviated in Dutch as RFEM. I will present this third presentation of the series with the title Spotlight on Test Guideline Updates for Nanomaterials. You can find the rest of the webinar series on YouTube through the NanoHarmony and NanoMet websites, which are indicated at the end of this presentation. For those viewers watching before September 16, 2020, you are invited to submit questions about these presentations through the online forum, which can also be found on the NanoHarmony website. Your questions will be answered at a live online discussion session on that September 16 at 1400 Central European Standard Time, which you are welcome to attend. Details regarding registration can be found on the NanoHarmony website. In, <clears throat> as we have seen in the pre, uh, second presentation in this series, uh, regulatory needs are, are driving the needs for OCD test guidelines. And yet scientific research is of course needed to provide a basis for these test guidelines. In this presentation, I therefore will bring some, some of these things in, in the spotlight. Uh, first, some, something on regulatory needs, then on OSD test guidelines and some on projects in NanoHarmony. In 2018, the European Chemicals Legislation REACH was updated uh, for nanomaterials uh, and enable uh, the risk assessment of those. A first step, of course, is the characterization of those nanoforms, uh, which goes beyond chemical identification alone. For this reason, there are four uh, requirements added uh, specifically for nanoforms, uh, which are the number size particle distribution, a description of the surface functionalization or treatment, uh, information on shape, aspect ratio, and other morphological characterization and uh, the specific surface area. Next to these characterization parameters, uh, additional requirements are uh, indicated which relate to uh, either the fate or uh, hazard uh, of nanoforms. And these include dissolution rate in water and relevant biological and environmental media dispersion stability, the dustiness, and the toxicokinetics. Also for other parameters, there are additional requirements, uh, but these are generally smaller. All details on, on this regulation can be found uh, via the link uh, indicated here. Within OECD, there are already uh, some guidelines published which are adapted or uh, developed for nanomaterials specifically. These include some uh, for human health endpoints, uh, particularly those focusing on inhalation uh, toxicity, and uh, some others focusing on the environmental endpoints, uh, one test guideline on the person stability uh, in environmental media, and uh, uh, guidance documents on uh, the uh, ecotoxicity testing and uh, on dissolution uh, and dispersion stability. These can be found uh, via the OECD website as indicated here, and they are freely available uh, there. Nevertheless, uh, much more work is needed in OECD to come up with uh, guidelines that can be used uh, for nanomaterials. And these are uh, in the different sections uh, that, that OECD distinguishes, uh, on the one hand, physical chemical properties, uh, 
further effects on biotic systems, environmental fate and behavior, and health effects. This is the full list of, of projects ongoing in OECD, um, but only a few of them are uh, supported uh, by work in by preparatory work in nano harmony. Uh, and these are encircled here. Um, from these projects in NanoHarmony, I will highlight two of them, uh, one on dissolution rate and one in toxicokinetics uh, to elaborate a bit more on, but just ex as examples of the work we're doing in NanoHarmony. On water solubility, OECD already has a test guideline, uh, 105, which focuses on the saturation mass concentration of the substance in water at a given temperature. And it specifically indicates in that test guideline that the presence of particles invalidates the tests, uh, making this test not suitable for nanomaterials. On dissolution rate, uh, there is a guidance document, number 29, uh, which is on metals and metal compounds in aqueous media which uses gentle agitation uh, to, uh, imp uh, to stimulate dissolution. Um, and it looks at one or more loadings in pH buffered aqueous media. Uh, and the distinction of a, a 0.2 micrometer filter uh, between dissolved fraction and non-dissolved fraction, uh, which of course, is not suitable for nanomaterials, for uh, which are all below that uh, micrometer, uh, that 0.2 micrometer filter. So, in short, these are not fully adequate for nanomaterials. Uh, for instance, the biological media are not considered, and therefore additional methodology is needed. Uh, this is what is ongoing in nanoharmony at the moment. Uh, several test setups are being optimized. Uh, there's a static system uh, indicated here on the on the left, uh, and the dynamic system here on the right. In the static system, the materials added in a jar. Uh, and uh, in that specific volume of uh, media uh, dissolution is uh, is measured, whereas the dynamic test, test setup uh, lets media go through a, a cell which has uh, the material of interest in there. Uh, both systems need some some control or some monitoring uh, of uh, how well uh, the specific uh, test is uh, performing. So those conditions need, need some further um, research to optimize and uh, also the, the length of the test durations uh, need some uh, optimizing. And then as indicated before we need to know for reach uh, something about uh, other media and here this project focuses on the biological media media like gastrointestinal fluids and lung lining fluids which to choose and how to uh, optimize that so in short the fo research focuses on optimizing the test setup finding the pros and cons of static versus dynamic methods and clearly uh, on the relevant media a second example is on toxicokinetics. Um, again, there is an OECD document uh, available on toxicokinetics, but uh, the current document 417, it, it reads a bit like a guidance document and, and it's not that stringent in uh, test description. Uh, furthermore, it focuses on oral administration, whereas the, for nanoparticles, it's the typical, typically focus on inhalation. And uh, also the current 
toxicokinetics guideline focuses on metabolism, which is in general less relevant for uh, solid particles. So again, as we've seen for the dissolution, this is not adequate for nanomaterials. Um, and more focus on inhalation and a more stringent test setup is needed, uh, which provoked further work. And in um, nano harmony, the work is uh, on uh, toxicokinetics, as I said. Uh, here, some preconditions are need needed as well. Uh, you need to be able to determine internal target tissues and uh, internal doses. And these depend on dissolution kinetics of particles in the relevant media uh, and also on the limit of detection of particles in target organs and uh, the study design in general. This first uh, items, the dissolution kinetics and the limit of detection are tackled in other documents uh, or other projects uh, like the one I previously showed on dissolution. So I'm not going, uh, they are not focusing here in this project on those uh, um, issues, but here the, the emphasis is on the minimum requirements for, for the study design, uh, looking at dosing regimen, uh, duration of post-exposure periods, time point for organ burden measurements uh, and key organs or tissues to be analyzed. The minimum study design will be based on uh, available and uh, newly performed in vivo, in vivo uh, toxicokinetic studies uh, where both oral and inhalation exposure are um, studied and also a range from poorly and for from poorly and moderate uh, quick uh, moderately quick dissolving uh, nanoparticles so dissolution rates differ between the particles that uh, this uh, study uh, looks at and uh, also some kinetic modeling will further inform uh, the study design. Next to that, there's some other issues that the project will look at, uh, like the choice of test species in sex uh, and the route of exposure. Uh, something on uh, how to prepare or characterize the material in the um, administration vehicle or matrix, and uh, also the administration mode will, will be looked at. Uh, for the uh, uh, long exposure, the, the, the differences between inhalation and intratracheal um, exposure, and, and also for oral, uh, the difference between simply adding food or gavage uh, feeding. So here, the focus is on uh, of the research is on the minimum study design and and the other issues just mentioned. As indicated before, there's many more projects ongoing, uh, both in, within and, and outside of NanoHarmony. And if you have any information that, that might be relevant for these project, for any of these projects, or you want to actively contribute to any of them, uh, please contact uh, NanoHarmony via the website. Um, another way of Getting more insight in the activities of OCD and NanoHarmony is uh, this international workshop on CAP analysis and data requirements to support test guideline and guidance document uh, development for NanoHarmony target endpoints. This this is an online. This will be an online multi-session workshop uh, early November, and there's an open session uh, which summarizes the. Uh, the discussions uh, of the more focused, uh, uh, more focused test guidelines, uh, and that will be on on the fifth of November that open session. Uh, 
And you can sign up for that uh, again via the Nano Harmony website as indicated. Finally, to summarize um, my own uh, presentation, but also a bit uh, including the other two, uh, I hope we have been able to show you that collaborations between research and regulatory communities are essential for um, uh, the development of OCD test guidelines. Uh, all, uh, while recognizing that there's differences in uh, in, in uh, how how these uh, regulators and and research communities work, for instance, the, the, there's in both OECD and the regulations, there's usually a, a lot of formal processes which might um, frustrate scientists a bit, but uh, are necessary to come up with um, uh, consensus on the test guidelines and, and ensure that they will be used uh, worldwide. And on the other hand, the regulators, of course, really need the scientific basis and scientific robustness of the tests. So what we try to do is, is bridge the gap, or whether it's there or, or only perceived, but these gaps between science and regulation need to be uh, uh, closed uh, or bridged. So that's what we're trying to do here in uh, Nano Harmony. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your, uh, for your attention. And, and listening and, and viewing this uh, webinar. And if you need further information, here are some of the contacts uh, available for you. Thank you very much.